Okay. Uh, need to go back now. Um, yeah, and yeah, uh, please keep my uh, uh, mute uh, microphones and mute. Uh, otherwise, you know, sometimes uh, the interference could affect uh, everyone's uh, hearing. You know, uh, and also feel free to switch off your cameras if you, it uh, makes you feel uh, more comfortable. And as this is interactive session, I would welcome you guys to, to just join in and, and have a discussion about whatever you think, you know, um, or feel about things uh, what I will be speaking about. Uh, so yeah, and please remember all views, questions and comments are welcomed. And it's going to be a long session if it's just uh, actually me talking, but I'm thinking it will be opposite. It will be a very short session <laughs> if it's just me. So, uh, next slide. So, challenging poverty. This is an opportunity for uh, for everyone, each of us, to actually raise uh, our voice against poverty and unite with others in calling for a more just and equal Scotland. So therefore, local voices, which is each of us, uh, uh, I'm, I'm actually targeting to join in on conversation and actually speak about a little bit about what our, our thought is about this, uh, uh, about uh, living in rural area and how we can make changes uh, uh, around it to, uh, to make uh, us feel more included. So. Uh, Living in rural area is not just a negative, there is a lot of positive things. It's, you know, closer to nature, uh, we are got, uh, got closer to, to actually enjoy the walks and a relaxing way of living. Uh, you are removed from hustle and bustle of the city, but of course uh, pollution comes in, so you got fresh air, you know. Uh, you have a whole bunch of space to yourself. Uh, yeah, that's also, I think, uh, as I'm living in a rural area, I can I can relate to that as well. You know, people don't, don't run into you and you've got space to <clears throat> kind of uh, freely uh, choose uh, uh, to not bump into people, <laughs> which is sometimes if you go to the city, it, it could be uh, quite challenging. Um, But sometimes it can feel you you have a little bit too much space, and and it can sometimes lead to feel uh, isolated and loneliness. There are many other factors can make someone who uh, feel lonely and isolated due to uh, lack of uh, friends, uh, community support, services, lack of transport. That could also affect employment opportunities. And of course, uh, at the moment, it's a uh, digital connection is uh, the the biggest one, I think, especially when we are uh, uh, all is, uh, uh, isolated in uh, within communities. So, so a little bit about research and uh, what studies has uh, uh, actually outlined about uh, social isolation is increasingly recognized as a public health issue. Studies have shown that isolation and loneliness put people at higher risk of long-term physical and mental health problems, including premature mortality. Henning Smith's preliminary research suggests that in rural areas, isolation can reduce people's ability to meet daily needs and such as access to health care and food. NHS Scotland in 2015 data indicates that children and adults who are socioeconomically disadvantage and those experiencing poor physical and mental health are at particular risk <clears throat> as are adults who are living alone, widowed or separated. Data from Scotland and the UK indicate that higher rate of loneliness in adults are associated with socioeconomic disadvantage, being in debt and being economically inactive. So as you've seen guys, as I already uh, highlighted, the 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 problems of accessing various uh, uh, service uh, transport, the very infrastructure that also 
uh, puts people in, uh, in a vulnerable position and uh, can affect them uh, not only in a material way, but also in a uh, health way. So uh, we got a story from lived experience online forum. Uh, a single mom has shared story. She lived in a very remote rural area and she has outlined her struggles with isolation. Even after many years moving to the village, she feels that locals still struggle to accept her. At the time when her daughter was still little, her, her health visitor, which was not much support, called her single loner, no pause mom. Also finding support through the years from various services has been a huge struggle for the family. After a year of being on the waiting list, family did receive support from Homestart, but it stopped. When her child reached five years of age, she asked, why the all support has stopped? Does that mean to be all fixed? After that, she have uh, tried various services like SAM, which failed to support family due to lack of funding, or Aberdeen for a year or CBT service, she felt she did not fit in. And my question from her is why there is such a lack of help for people like me who, ha who have a like-minded folk just be around and help. So this is a very, uh, I think uh, also a very powerful uh, a story. Uh, and also we can link um, from uh, maybe those who haven't, uh, haven't attended the previous session, the importance of local voices there, there was a conversation held about communities, how we can connect, connect with communities and make the communities stronger, that people do feel that they're connecting and can share their experiences and actually get help from community. So, and, and I think in her first even sentence, uh, it was outlined, uh, I think very powerfully, uh, where, uh, I think what has been a big, uh, uh, a huge problem. She admits even after many years moving to the village, she feels that locals still struggle to accept her. You know, uh, um, which, which shows, you know, that there sometimes could be services and, and services are designed uh, to help people and support and, and, and tackle loneliness. But uh, I think that, biggest support comes from from the community itself and and then we ask question who is the community i think the community it is each of us you know because we make the community we make the community and uh and we are responsible uh how we um uh shape that community so so when we start to speak about communities and and that there is a problem and it needs to be changed. I do believe uh, as it is a uh, awareness week and, and just to change the conversation, I do believe we, we kind of need to ask questions to ourselves, you know, what we can do to change the situation because we are, each of us are powerful people and, uh, and we can make changes. So it's uh, in this situation, I do believe that inclusion plays very big part and feeling inclusive, which is also the, the, the project I'm leading, how to live the experience online forum. It's all about uh, being inclusive. And, and when people do feel inclusive, uh, they do start to uh, voice their, uh, ra uh, kind of raise their voice uh, uh, in a way that they're being heard. And more they exercise that, uh, the more confidence they gain and, and the message comes more powerful and, and people kind of in a joint way start to uh, kind of understand each other a lot better. Uh, so uh, also there is a, uh, a, about this story, I could say that there is a, such a lack of help for people like me who have like-minded folk just being around and help. So she's, uh, what, what I, I, I kind of uh, also believe she's saying that, uh, you know, 
that she just wants to be around someone. So, so I think uh, the new ways of working, especially after COVID, uh, we are all adopting new ways of working, including me. And uh, we are uh, trying to uh, make uh, our communities more inclusive digitally as much as possible. So I think uh, the developing groups uh, led by peers, I think, will be also very powerful way of, uh, I think, tackling isolation because uh, peer-led groups are, are, are focusing on the, they know better what kind of support they are looking for. For example, uh, we already, uh, from lived experience online forum, there has been a group, a uh, close group developed uh, together with Shia, which has developed because the parents, uh, families has expressed that they want that group. So uh, we kind of, um, I think basically uh, what I as a support, uh, um, a support I developed a, a safe place and, and then they, I empowered them to, to shape that group and, and, and speak in the group again, what they want to speak about, how they want, what kind of information they want to share and and but just make it safe that they feel that it is a safe space and and that there could not be you know uh, abused uh, from various reasons because uh, as we know uh, internet is a very good tool but it also could be you know uh, if it mismanaged could be um, uh, uh, be a reverse effect so so guys is there any uh, anyone wants to join in about the, uh, this uh, kind of particular uh, situation in your community or, or, or can relate to this story? No? Okay, we will move to the next story. There is another story uh, uh, which is shared uh, from a, a family. If I didn't have a car, things would be very different for me. There is no bus service as far as I'm aware. Nearest town is three miles in one direction and ten in another. The community is lovely and would never see anyone struggle. But if you don't have connections with the school, it is very easy for people to become isolated. Also, due to the location of our house away from the rest of the community, there have been occasions where my children have been excluded from social meetups with friends as little cliques are formed with the children that live close to the school. Uh, this is another example, uh, we were uh, like we were speaking about inclusion uh, and I think this one has reminded me another uh, really good example uh, on so, uh, about the leading social media uh, parents come together page. Uh, uh, where we, um, where I'm, I kind of every day share uh, stories, and I, what I have no as uh, uh, we need, we need to kind of also not just speak about inclusion, but I maybe maybe promote better on on the uh, uh, on the platforms, you know, the media platforms, uh, and and speak about it. Um, I had. Um, by mistake, actually, I, I found a really good video uh, uh, about inclusion. And when I shared it, when I even had a comment from a guy uh, who said it brought tears into his eyes. He probably could relate to himself or, 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 or from somebody from his family that uh, uh, we need to be sometimes uh, think about uh, as we, as an adult, we, we also struggle with loneliness, uh, but also um, as children living in rural areas have an impact on that. In this particular story, uh, it doesn't highlight that, but uh, I have also from uh, from the forum hearing that there is a, a lot of isolation have been noticed uh, children are living in rural areas, especially if they are uh, have some uh, diff, uh, 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 there is diff they are different from someone else or or they are you know 
or they don't live close enough, uh, like in this story. So, so I think inclu inclusive uh, um, communities again, uh, we need to kind of uh, look at each other and 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 see, you know, how we can change this, and uh, as a maybe community workers, we can change that uh, by by you know speaking about it and maybe more promoting materials about it and uh, as each community member you know we can also kind of highlight that and, and pay attention if we do uh, make events and, and things like that that we manage to include everyone uh, even even those who who are um, um, maybe struggle to uh, uh, attend or, or 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 struggle to connect, which I'm sure everyone is doing their best because uh, this is a, I think, new way how we work and we are uh, uh, we are adopting new ways of uh, engaging uh, with uh, each other. So um, right. This is another uh, uh, another last story of the the online from the online forum and family says I kind of like to live in village rather than town, let alone city because all the peace and quiet and close to nature. But there are some obvious problems of difficulty to get a job, lack of transport, especially because I haven't got my own car, and also children are missing some opportunities to attend various courses. So, guys, how do we keep connected with people? Tell us what works and what doesn't work uh, for you and your community. Is there any thoughts about that? Anyone? Annette, what, what do you think? Um, I can relate to uh, all the stories that you've uh, put up on your slides. Um, coming into a rural area can be really quite daunting, especially if you don't have transport. And it isn't always easy to make those connections. I know when I moved up here, I was a lone parent with two kids. And my children, fit because we came from a town, well, we came from Perth, which they could have everything on their doorstep. Then we came up to a rural area. It was very different. And you can miss out on opportunities. Um, you don't always feel welcomed at the local playgroup or parents groups or community groups and um, so I think it's about one uh, making sure that those who do feel a bit more isolated are connected and their confidence um, is developed uh, and so they feel valued and so they feel that they have a right to actually go and do some volunteering or or go to uh, the community group. I also think that when you come up to some of the communities you don't really know where to start so you know if there was a way that we could um, have uh, information about the area more readily available I think social media is really good for that um, but also about working with local groups themselves uh, and supporting them because they only know what they know and people are volunteering and um, giving up their time they won't necessarily because they've been here for a lot longer and they feel part of the community, might not understand how scared people are of new things and going and meeting new people. Um, so I think there's there's different ways that we can support either the community itself or those people that are coming into it. I think social media really helps. That's been a platform that's engaged people, but I also think that um, communities themselves might need to just be a bit more inclusive but I think that they don't know that they're not 
So, you know, having these conversations and raising awareness of how scary things are for people is, is good. I was going to ask is there any sort of best practice for people because um, when you talk about being inclusive, sometimes that can be like a big statement that people aren't sure about how to be inclusive. Yeah. Are there things that are sort of top, top tips? I can remember when I moved to Rurui and I had a, um, my son who was a baby at the time uh, walking to the local um, play group or toddler group. And the first thing was I couldn't actually uh, do the child gate to get through. So I had to turn back on day one. And then on day two, when I went in, uh, people didn't really come and sit beside me and that kind of stuff. And, and nobody's bad, but I just wonder about top tips about what that, that phrase actually means. Yeah, and I think it's good to have good practice. I think people, if you're used to a community, you don't understand how scary it can be just walking into that group for the first time. And we used to have um, probably more opportunities for communities to get together than what we've done uh, recently. But yeah, I think sharing good practice is good. And maybe the language that we use, like you're saying, could be something that is not inclusive in itself. So maybe um, using plain language when we're talking about people and what that means is, is also good. Thank you. Does anyone else would like to comment? I think Margot wants to come in. I think sometimes uh, maybe if you can possibly have the opportunity to do a wee bit of hand holding, a bit of warm uh, hand holding, taking someone along or, you know, going along to a virtual meeting with somebody first time uh, can make a big difference because I know that for a lot of people that I work with, that first step is, is such a huge um, jump for them and just making that first step, but also for the other people around them, seeing that, uh, you know, just uh, the confidence that someone can get from having a wee bit of support for that first step. The next time along, they might be the person that will do that hand holding or asking someone that you know can do that hand holding to do the support next time along. I think can make a huge difference. Yeah, I think you. I think you are very right, uh, Marco. There because I know as working with the, with the families, uh, we are uh, actually after a good while we we started kind of. It's their suggestion again because I'm I'm trying to lead the the forum as just a. Uh, on the on the on the families, base of families, you know how how they when they are feel comfortable to do anything, you know, and uh, then one family did say, you know, oh, I would like to kind of because they've been sharing so much uh, on on uh, online with each other, and and I think they felt so connected, but at the same time <laughs> they they haven't met each other, so there are some families. Uh, did want to kind of uh, make that step to actually see each other, uh, and and then again there was not everyone was ready for it, but those who wanted, you know, and um, and I thought, well, that's a positive step because it's not only they are meeting each other; it's it's the all new experience, like like you're saying as well, you know, uh, using online for uh, um, online a platform as well, so uh, so. I, I, I'm like all for it, you know, to just the first steps and also as well, uh, kind of make sure that they um, got my support when they're logging in or how to log it in and, and that they not feel uncomfortable to ask me that, you know, because sometimes uh, we, we do assume that everyone knows everything and, and kind of, but in the in the right way, kind of yeah, just uh, give that support if they do need. So so no, it's. Uh, but I, I could say again, same about the group together we share. I think we are that's like actually again different and different level. Uh, people want to join that group and and share their 
and be part of something. Uh, and I can see that it's at the first stage when everyone kind of feel like, uh, you know, uh, new and uh, to know the boundaries and how, how much how much I can say about me and how much. But but then uh, I'm, I'm hoping by Christmas time, yeah, there, there will be shaping again with good kind of confidence and then so. And it is all about inclusiveness uh, and um, and uh, because sometimes I do feel uh, working with the parents, I understand sometimes we can put so many services in place, but but we are all in individual way we are on all different and we need different things and 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 uh, like Annette uh, also mentioned uh, in our previous session uh, uh, the importance of local voices it's it's sometimes hard for services to predict what, what each individual would need. And sometimes it, you cannot design a service for each individual. So, so we kind of need to see, you know, what an, an, an online platform is a good that they can choose, you know, what exactly they are looking for, what kind of group I would more enjoy. So that would be, I think, a way forward for a lot of people, you know, to kind of tailor for their needs, you know, uh, kind of thing and, and feel inclusive. Uh, yeah, it's, is there anything else? Anyone else wants, would like to join in and say? No, I think, yeah, it's... Uh, Agnes, I was going to ask, I'm unfamiliar with the scope of your project. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if you wanted to give a few details about that oh yeah yeah i can i can easily tell a little bit more about the project uh, it's just that yeah again we had previous session earlier on this morning so um i just assumed that uh you know uh but yeah I, i'm i'm kind of um um, um developing a, a lived experience uh, online forum uh where we recruit families across aberdeenshire uh and they are anonymously contribute to the online forum, uh, uh, their experiences around, uh, around accessing various services. But uh, the project is not only about um, gathering their views about accessing various services. The project is also about uh, for families to actually um, to make you know uh, to make them feel uh, 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 included, uh, to make them feel that their voice matters and that they can gain confidence to move on with the life uh, with my support along with that. Because uh, uh, sometimes uh, you just need someone who listens and 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 to gain that confidence and and actually successfully step by step move forward whatever family ever ever dreams they have, whether it's, whether it's a education or whether it's a changing a, a, a career or, 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 or whether it's a, a maybe be more a active community member. So yeah, uh, I'm just, the project is, is empowering people uh, to actually successfully um, uh, move uh, and fulfill uh, uh, their their aims and uh, and what they want to achieve in life. So so and that of course comes along that they can uh, uh, also help the communities and uh, and uh, uh, with their voices we can change uh, services uh, more, which is more designed uh, and more suitable for people to access it. So so I think it, all all who. Um, uh, I think that the project uh, benefits uh, internally and externally uh, from various uh, uh, point of uh, uh, from various factors. So, so yeah, that's uh, and uh, at the moment we 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 actually got a good number of families engaging with the project, and there has already been a very good feedback um, from the families uh, that um, there are. Uh, so far, enjoying a project, uh, 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 and it's it's it has made a difference for them, for some of them to just feeling and uh, feeling included, and they can uh, share uh, they are uh, just a share that 
their experiences. I feel that they are not alone, that uh, many other people like uh, have a very similar experiences. They also can share uh, uh, knowledge about uh, about various uh, access to various services, which is, as we know, sometimes uh, uh, um, especially charity organizations where funding is, uh, um, you know, opening a short term project, they're closing an opening. So, so families kind of share what, what is current at the moment uh, uh, and where help is available. And they kind of empowering each other and support each other, which is good to, to, to actually observe that. Uh, yeah, during during the online forum conversations, uh, I I try not too much interfere because I kind of like to organically see how the it's organically uh, develops and and uh, uh, what families would like to say because sometimes I think my interference can uh, uh, affect their their answers and how they feel about it to just. Uh, be nice to me. <laughs> so, so yeah, we, I'm kind of trying to uh, uh, just, they are the ones who lead me in this project. So, uh, and, 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 and I have uh, learned so much uh, even from, from the start because the COVID has changed uh, ways, you know, how, how we deliver things and and, and of course, it's changed the need, how families feel, uh, feel the need, they need to be supported. So, so yeah, we, we kind of, um, uh, I think in the uh, process, of, process of learning uh, and understanding uh, from both sides, uh, families want to understand what's happening and, and how, what uh, um, would be most uh, helpful for them. And, and I'm kind of learning, you know, what would be, the the most effective ways uh, to, to go around and and and, and deliver the, or service. So, so yeah. Is is there any other more questions, Shona, about the project? Is that... uh, no, thank you. That was really good. It was just uh, good to get a bit of a background. So, thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else would like to say anything or comment? Yeah, it was just to say to Shona, there will be um, uh, slides going up uh, on our web our web page, which is within our Aberdeenshire for Challenge Poverty Week, um, and it gives some background to the the online lived experience forum. Um, and happy to have wider discussions as well because I know that Agnes is really keen to get um, more uh, people recruited into the, the forum at the moment um, so yeah happy to follow that up thank you Annette thank you does anyone else would like to comment or que have any questions I think yeah that uh, I think I, I managed to cover everything I would like to cover and if no one got any more questions or have nothing to maybe add we can finish this session and guys thank you very much for coming uh, and listening and actually taking your valuable Saturday's uh, time you know to come to the session I do appreciate it yeah and We'll see you all uh, later on. But yeah, if you if you do have any any more questions, uh, I can send my email, you know, and go get in touch with me, and and you know, I'd be, be happy to to have a chat or or or, or discuss or or you know uh, or share if, if because I know that some uh, uh, communities do, do ask when it, about the feedback and and things like that, or, or if you got. Uh, any particular community you want feedback from, so we can ask families and we can uh, provide you with the feedback. You know what family says, um, saying about, for example, we had in a Bahan, uh, Bahan area developed a leaflet and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, po Bahan Poverty Hub asked uh, the opinion from lived experience about the leaflet. And they did give very valuable points, pointed out what would be more uh, 
useful, uh, user friendly way uh, for, you know, and I think it helped them. So many other things, if there is, uh, you know, just get in touch and we can see how we can help. Thank you, that's been really good. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, Alakas. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for coming. <laughs>